matter. How's it going? How's it going? Good. Hey Cam, Jordan Ham Sports 360AZ. Um, just what did you notice in terms of the play calling that was different from previous games with Coach Dillingham calling the plays? Um, it was super aggressive. Um, I mean, we we ran the ball a lot more than we have in the past. Um, we were downhill attack. We knew we could run the ball on these guys, and um, it's, it was working. So we stuck with it. Uh, we called our shots when our shots needed to be called. We had, we had a couple mistakes. Um, that kind of bit us towards the end of the game, but I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy for the most part of the defense and the offense really coming together a lot more than the last three weeks. Um, on the sidelines, felt more of, more of a family out there, um, tighter knit, a lot more energy. Um, it was beautiful out there with all the fans still still there. You know, when I come out of halftime and I see everybody still on the sidelines or everyone's still in the fans, it's like these they believe in us. So um, that was good to see. But yeah, it was nice to see the play calling being aggressive and. Um, using using his players as, as much as he could. Cam, right here. Chris Cartman, son of his horse. Obviously, it was part of the game plan, but um, what did you think about just punting, fake punt, throwing in the end zone, all those kinds of things? And had you done any of any of that stuff previously? Um, yeah. I mean, I I like to do everything. Um, I believe I could do everything. So when I when they put me in those situations, I believe I I'm gonna excel at them. Um, with the help of this dude right here. Um, he made it happen on one of them. So, I mean, I'm, I'm put in the right position with the right guys around me. So uh, I'm just going to keep playing hard and trusting what the coach has got for us. Kim, Doug Haller with the Athletic. When, when was the last time you punted in a game? Say it again. When was the last time you punted in a game? Uh, the fourth game of my senior year. I think I punted about 70-something yards. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you just take us through that fake punt, um, what you saw, and then also after that, the 52-yard touchdown, how you uh, just kept your balance going down the sideline? Uh, I'm I'm going to be in trouble tomorrow. Um, the fake the the throw on the fake punt was not supposed to happen. Um, but me and him were kind of in connection in the middle of the play. It wasn't planned before, but I start yelling Badger's name and he looks looks over. So I know he's got my back if I put the ball in the air. Um, but I mean I, I expect to score every play. So on that last play, I just kept my feet and I was able to stay balanced and keep going. Uh, yeah, uh, Badge, just um, your thoughts about Kenny calling plays and the rhythm that you guys were able to get into tonight and what you can take from this positively moving forward. Uh, I think we win the game with a great plan, and I think he was aggressive, aggressive play calling. And I just think he used everybody to the best of, the, to the best of their ability. Everybody moving around, motioning, different tempos. I think he just – the way he just came in with a good game plan, I think that – how much can this help you guys moving forward, just getting into a rhythm offensively? Uh, I think it'll help us a lot. Going into games with just better game plans, and I think we'll just score more points. Scott. Scott's into a Devil's Digest. For all three of you guys, that's the number five team in the country that you just took pretty much down to the wire. Does it give you a kind of confidence the rest of the way that you can compete with some of the best teams out there? Um, I don't think we ever just lost confidence. I think we just came back and kept practicing, kept the family together, and we just knew what we could do, and we just put it out there in the field. Yeah, I mean, with yeah. Dillingham preaching in the locker room every day, um, we believe we could beat anybody in the country. We should have beat that team. Um, we had a couple mistakes late. Um, they kind of got us. We had them on the ropes, and then we kind of didn't excel, didn't exceed in what we had a, had planned. But, I mean, it happens. Um, we'll be back next week, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, it was good to see. I mean, I think overall, as a as a team, we improved. I think there was like, like Scott was saying before, there was more of a family culture on the sideline. Everyone getting involved with each other, and that was good to see. Obviously, it's not the outcome we wanted, and I mean, you can't be too happy about that. You can't ever be happy about losing. Um, but there are good things coming forward, and we feel like we can keep building from this. A couple more, then we'll get to coach Michelle. Obviously, you guys have had a lot working against you, being you know, the injuries and whatnot, and very few people probably expected this game to be close. How guys, how did you guys kind of keep a positive attitude, outlook throughout the week and then even coming into this game? Um, 
Go ahead. I mean, Coach Dillingham is big on this. You always believe you have to win, and I mean, everybody has to look in the mirror at themselves and, and say, to, say to themselves that we are going to win this game. You know, that's what it all comes down to is confidence, believing that you're going to win. When you doubt that you're going to win, that's when bad things start to happen. And so, I mean, it, starts with, it started with Coach Dillingham from the beginning of the week. He told us we are going to win this game. And so, you know, it, it really helped us get, to get the confidence coming into practice and, and coming into the game. Yeah, he nailed it. Mike. And then, Kevin, you guys, you talked about obviously the family culture on the sidelines, but going for it on fourth down and with the way the defense was playing too, do you feel that this game here was the most complimentary football that the team has played overall? Yeah, for sure. Um, he's, he does what he, what he does. Um, there's a reason he has the best offenses in the country. Um, and, I mean, today it showed a lot a lot today. Um, we made a few mistakes, and it, there wasn't too much mistakes in play calling, I would say. Um, we had a couple, couple miss, missed assignments and errors and stuff here. But, I mean, we were put in the right position to win that football game and um, had a couple mistakes. That's it. Um, defense played, played their butts off the whole game. Um, I honestly didn't think they were going to score another point after 27. Um, but once, once the offense kind of slows down, it's hard for the defense to continue to uh, keep their foot on their necks. And, I mean, they played hard. Um, we played hard. Just made a couple mistakes. One last question, Sam. Uh, Sammy New, Devil's Digest. Tate, uh, USC rushed over 200 yards today. What was kind of the things they were doing that you, that you guys struggled with on the run game? Um, I mean, obviously, they're great offense, rated, I think, top offense in the country coming into this. Um, you know, they were, I mean, and you obviously have Caleb Williams. He was calling out a lot of checks and stuff before plays. They were doing, making a lot of adjustments pre-snap. Um, I think that, you know, that, that led into a lot of that. Um, you know, we didn't execute plays like we wanted to. Um, so, yeah, it's just unfortunate. All right, thanks for the time today. Go, go. Chris Cartman, son of a source. Kenny, can you talk about the aggressive approach offensively in the first half? Scat said that maybe that wasn't supposed to be the the fake punt wasn't supposed to go that way, or maybe not a fake punt at all, but just the overall approach and what you guys were trying to do. Yeah, we're trying to attack. Bottom line, trying to attack. And uh, you have to play this game attacking. If you want to beat teams like that, if you want to beat offensive coaches like Lincoln Riley and offensive quarterbacks, like uh, Caleb Williams, you have to attack and you can't play the game scared. So we said we wanted to call every shot that we had in the game. And uh, I probably called about three too many there in the second half on first downs when it's a six-point game that I'd like to have back. And what did you see as the biggest differences that led to a loss? Yeah, led, led to the loss. Yeah, I would say the turnovers offensively and uh, struggling protecting the quarterback. And that starts with me. Uh, understanding being more timely with some calls in order to protect our O line. I mean, those are some that that D line is is a really, 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 really good D line. Coach Grinch does a lot of really good things schematically, moving them and uh, making those guys pass protect even in seven man pro. Uh, you know, we're not there yet, and I got to do a better job of protecting our guys on those early downs so we don't get behind the chains. That was the tale of the two halves. First half, we were ahead of the chains. Second halves, first downs were aggressive calls that we were getting sacked on. We got to throw the ball away or not call those calls so we can stay ahead of the chains and stay in a rhythm. Coach Scott Sanduli, Devil's Digest. Uh, with this being your first ranked matchup as a head coach against a top five team such as USC, were you looking kind of for anything from USC to kind of, as, as a on a program standpoint that you could try to instill here that makes them so successful that you could put here? Winning. But no. I mean, we're going to run our pro. Every job is different. Every place is different. We're going to run this program. Uh, you know, I'm from here. Uh, I'll say this on that topic. This was activating the Valley. Like, this environment is activating the Valley. The sold-out crowd, loud, Third and 20, the first drive with two penalties. Like, that was just as much important. That was just as important to winning this game than anything I've done to my, that I've done in, in my meeting rooms and my players because they go out there and they know it cares and they feed off the energy. And there's actually a competitive advantage when we have everybody in the stands. It's an advantage. So to see all the fans in the stands like that, 
to see the Valley like that, that's what we need every game. And if we get that every game, you're going to get the play that you guys want every game. Or at least I hope. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, obviously you hung with the number five team in the country for most of the game. What are the biggest positives you can draw from this? Yeah, I think our guys realize we have the ability. So the belief factor that they know that we can go out there and win football games. You know, it doesn't matter how we start. Like, what's, what's the record matter this year anyways? It doesn't. The only thing that should matter is getting better. And we go on the road next week at Cal and let's do everything we can to win a football game. Let's prepare more than we've ever prepared. So the positives, I would say, I think our brotherhood is growing. I think players are feeding off each other more. I think their, the belief in the vision is still rising. The belief in the process is still rising. And those are the things that excite me. Coach Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ. Uh, were there any adjustments you needed to make calling an offense but from the field level versus up up above? Uh, to be honest, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, you know, Coach Baldwin did a phenomenal job communicating. Our entire staff did a phenomenal job communicating throughout the game what we were seeing. I'd say the hardest thing is more seeing, like, the line twists and the stunts internally uh, in terms of how they're trying to stop the run game with ET games or nut, the nut games, what they call them. I'm getting too detailed. We're good. Yeah. Kenny, coming off last week's games, um, kids these age can be unpredictable. When did you first see this past week? When did you first feel that, that they were going to bounce back and put, uh, put forth an effort that, that they did tonight? The locker room after Fresno State. Our guys are going to compete. Like, if they're going to compete, they're going to compete, they're going to compete, and they're going to go to work to get better every single day. Uh, if there's, I can't always guarantee you the perfect call. I can't always guarantee you a lot of things. I can guarantee you our guys are going to go to work, and our guys are going to play with passion. What, what was it in the locker room that you saw after the game? The eyes. When you look at people's eyes and they don't like that feeling, you can feel that they want to do something about it and create change. And then you show up on mon Monday and you have the entire offense in the, in the uh, team meeting room 10 minutes early. You're like, okay, well, something's changed offensively. So now we just got to play a complete game. And if we play a complete football game, we're going to be a pretty good football team. Hey, Kenny, Jake Seymour, Sun Devil Source. Uh, you mentioned some of those aggressive plays and maybe in the second half going like three plays too far with it. How do you kind of toe the line between being aggressive but maybe not going those extra steps too far? Yeah, you just got to get a feel for your guys. I would say that's the balance is uh, the more aggressive you can be, the better. But you have to get a, a feel for how are your guys holding up. And uh, I should have known with our depth at the O-line that throughout the game, right, that there's going to be a little bit more rush as the game progresses because they're rolling, you know, 10 deep on the D-line. And we got seven guys, eight guys rolling right now on the O-line. So it was one of those scenarios where I should have known and had a better feel for kind of where our guys were and not put them in those situations. Michael. Coach Michael Carasino, Pitchforks, uh, lunch. When you uh, defensively, I know all week you said about, you know, obviously tough to slow down Caleb Williams, but overall, I mean, especially in the first half, even going into the second, I know he made some plays, but how do you feel their performance was keeping him in the pocket and making him at least make tougher throws? Yeah, I thought our defense did a, a solid job. I think there's a lot of things that they did. I mean, they, they have a great offensive scheme. They have a great quarterback that's really hard. And they check almost every play at the line of scrimmage. And they do it really quickly, and they're all on the same page. So it's really, really hard to stop what they do when you combine the talent with good scheme. I think our guys, uh, there's some things that we can do better. You know, it was our worst Wednesday practice on defense, right? And that showed up. Wednesday's third down day. And it was our worst Wednesday, and then all of a sudden it shows up that a third and 20 they convert. Why? We get out of our rush lane. We bring a twist game and we don't loop. Okay? So there's a lot of things that we have to watch the tape and can't just say, oh, that's Caleb Williams. We have to say, okay, what can we do better to grow? What can we do better? And that's a sign of a, of a good football team is you go back to work on Monday and you don't look at your good plays. You look at the plays that you can improve upon. And that's including myself. That's the coaches. That's the play callers. That's everybody involved has to go back and look at themselves and say, what can I do better? A couple more questions back here. And then you get this to Chris for me. 
Joseph Igo, State Press. Kenny, um, obviously packed house, tough opponent, intense game. Uh, what did you learn about your guys' ability to play in intense moments tonight? Yeah, it's not too big for them. Uh, it's not too big for them. They want these moments. You come to ASU to play in these moments. And every kid comes to uh, goes to a college, and a lot of their decision is the environment, to be honest. The environment we create is going to not only affect wins, it's going to affect recruiting. And that environment today, <laughs> that environment today, I challenge people to bring that because that was an environment. That was an environment you can win at a high level in. That was an environment that our kids deserve. That was an environment our fans deserve because it's fun. It's fun to be in that environment. And we're going to keep getting better as a football team. And uh, let's keep getting that turnout because that was a really good environment and credit to the fans, man. I, I couldn't, couldn't be happier with the turnout, and thank you. Kenny, um, you didn't have uh, your O-line coach Saga uh, tonight. Uh, is there an update on him? Um, what did you have to do to adjust to that, and how did it go? Yeah, uh, yeah. unfortunately he wasn't with us. Uh, no real update right now. We're just waiting uh, for his situation and uh, the, no real update there. So, And what we had to do to adjust, you know, Matt Christensen did a great job coming in there and helping the O-line communicating. And uh, throughout the week I kind of popped in there a little bit uh, in order to coach some of those. I don't know the fundamentals, but I know the scheme behind it. So. Kenny Nick King from 3TV CBS 5. Cam, one of the first things he said was that the sideline felt like a family in a way it didn't the first three games. You're talking about the brotherhood, the belief in the vision is growing. Was that quickened by the way last week went, or did something in particular happen at practice this week, do you think? No, I think it's just time. You know, adversity either tears you apart or brings you together. So I think those are the two choices you have. Adversity either makes you quit or makes you work harder. So I think our guys right now are treating this adversity and coming together and treating this adversity and working harder. And uh, that's the sign of uh, the direction that we want to go as a program. And I say this a lot. I sat in this exact same seat four years ago just calling the plays, not as a head coach. I've seen this process. I've seen it. And we're on the same trajectory. We're working our brotherhood, the way our kids talk about each other, the way our kids work. Uh, we're working to get there. Anything else? All right, thank you. He had a question. One more. Hey, uh, hey Coach Dillingham. Uh, Hi. One more. We'll grab the mic. Thank okay, you. perfect. Uh, my name's Ken Vito, Inferno Intel. So, obviously, you have to face the uh, – last year's Heisman, Caleb Williams. But how does that necessarily prepare you for the following le uh, following weeks, like uh, your former team, Oregon, who has Bo Nix, Schroeder Sanders from Colorado? How does that prepare you facing such an elite quarterback so quickly? Yeah, this league is, you know, on to the next elite quarterback in this league. I mean, you, Phoenix, right? Kid down south's good, right? I mean, there's a lot of good quarterbacks right now in this league. This is arguably the best league in college football right now. So we've got our work cut out for us. We got to go back to work on Monday. We got to do, like I tell the kids every week, what are you doing more than you did last week? So we got to do more this week than we did last week. We got to go back to work and we got to come out versus Cal on the road and put our best effort out there. Yeah, Coach, uh, Jack Church, I'm with the K Love Radio Network. Uh, you know, coaches hate the term moral victory. This was still a loss. What's your message to the team? Was it a moral victory? No. I told the team, uh, losing, it does never feel good. If you walked into this room right now and you have an ounce of feel good, you've got, this is not the play, like, that's not what we're about at all. In any way, shape, or that will never be what we're about. But we got better. So the win and loss, put aside. Look at our own game. Did we improve? Yes, we improved in some areas. Did we not improve in other areas? Yes. Got to get better in those. So you should never get comfortable or never be happy with losing a football game. But what can you grow from, what can you learn from, and what can you take away, get away from it is a completely separate conversation. And we played one of the best coaches in college football, one of the best quarterbacks in college football, and uh, we were in it. And um, I really think 
you know, I could have done a few things better for our players, helped our players a little bit more to give them a better chance. And I want to do everything I can moving forward to try to put our players in a better situation next week than I did this week because that's my job. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you Coach. Appreciate it.